Today we have a really simple beginner friendly geometry node tutorial. So even if you don't know geometry nodes, this is really simple. It's just a small handful of nodes. And the thing we're making here is some knurling. So knurling is something really cool that you get usually on like knobs or surfaces that need a lot of sort of like texture or grip. And you can see I made this knurling thing here and it's not actually modeled. This is completely non-destructive. The really cool thing is here, we now have a way of controlling these um, knurling bits. So we can make this sort of like pointiness or the depth of it, we can adjust. As you can see here, I can make it more pointy. Um, we can increase or decrease the amount of segments. So you can adjust the resolution. So I just want you guys to see that there is a procedural way of doing knurling. So that's gonna be a really quick tutorial here. And one thing to keep in mind, the knurling is actually just this bit over here, just these few nodes. This little extra bit of math here, which is super simple, it's just so we can tell it where we want it to be on the cylinder, but you don't even have to do that bit if you don't want to. So let's jump in and I hope you guys enjoy this quick, um, simple beginner's knurling geometry nodes tutorial. So this is gonna be really simple. Let's just select the default cube and we're gonna go into our geometry nodes workspace. Now I've got my own custom GeoNodes workspace that I've set up, but you could just use the default one, it doesn't matter. Just make sure whatever object you have selected, you just wanna go ahead and click new over here in your geometry nodes just to add a new system. And we're gonna go shift A search and we're just gonna type in, once we do that, we're gonna type in cylinder and then you're gonna grab a cylinder and just plug the mesh into the geometry output like so. So it doesn't really matter what object you add it to, because we're gonna be seeing it over here as a cylinder, because we're plugging in a cylinder. We're gonna come over here just to our window if you want. Um, this is optional, but I just like to come to the drop down temporarily and just enable the wireframe just so we can at least see the topology. And over here in the cylinder, I'm gonna make the vertices over here 64. So an even number. And over here in the side segments, I'll just make it 32 or maybe 20. Yeah, 20 is better. So you just want these little squares. It's important that you're dealing with even little squares like this, okay? So you can up the resolution on both of these if you want, but just make sure they roughly look like squares. So now we wanna take each one of these squares, we wanna extrude them and inset them a little bit. So we're gonna go Shift A, Search. And we don't really have like an inset node, but what we could do, we can go Extrude. And just get an Extrude Mesh and just place it on here. And now you can see it extrudes everything, right? So what we wanna do, we wanna leave it as individual, but we wanna come here and let's just make the um, offset here zero, okay? And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna move up a little bit, we're gonna go Shift A, search and get a scale. And we're gonna get a scale elements and place it on here. And now what we can do is we can actually scale these elements. So if I make this like 0.5, everything is gonna scale. So what we need to do, we need to say, take the top extrusion, which is the faces that have been extruded, we'll make that the selections. Now it only extrudes that way. Okay, so now if I change the scale, um, maybe let's make it 0 0.01, or maybe 0 0.9, just try a different, uh, yeah, 0 0.9 is what we wanna go for. 0 0.9 is a really sort of good size. We just want a little bit of a border, just so there's a slight gap. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take this extrude mesh again, go shift D to duplicate, place it on here. And what we wanna do now is we wanna extrude it. So let's maybe extrude it by like 0.1. There we go, so 0.1. And it's extruding everywhere. So what we'll do is we'll take that top selection and we'll plug it into the selection here. So it only extrudes out that same face. So we've got a value of 0.1 here. Let's just leave it for now. And now we wanna take this face that's been extruded and we wanna go ahead and get another scale element. So shift D to duplicate, place it on here. And we just wanna scale those new elements that have been created. So let's just take that top selection output and put it into the selection of the scale. And now we can make this like 0.1 or something really small, okay? So essentially, if you wanna um, change the depth of this, all you have to do is come here to the secondary extrude and let's just actually drag on that and give it a value. And now we can know that we just gotta to come to this value and if we slide this value around, that gives us the ability to control how far that goes in and out like that. Okay, and you can actually, um, I think double click on this or right click and go rename and let's just call this um, pointiness. So we know that's the amount of pointiness that we have. and. Um, what we can do here, and this is, this is already kind of like a knurled effect, but I like to limit the selection here. So to only have it in the middle. And the way we can do that is quite simple. We're gonna come here before our cylinder and we wanna tell the first extrude mesh what to extrude. So we only wanna have it extrude some of the faces. So we're gonna go Shift A, Search. We're gonna sample the position. 
So let's just type in Shift A and then search here for the position and we're going to read the position geometry. Then we want to separate the Z component, which is just the up and down component here. We're going to go Shift A, search and get a separate, and get a separate X, Y, Z, like so. And let's just take this position, plug it into that vector, like so. And then what we want to do is we want to go Shift A, search and get a math, get a math utilities, and we want to change it to a compare. So um, probably a greater than. So let's go here and let's make it a greater than. Let's just plug the Z into this value here. There we go. And now we're saying we want to look at the position on the Z and we want to take anything greater than this value. So we're going to take this value here and plug it into the selection of the first extrude. And now you can see anything greater than this value here based on this Z. So in this case, it's the positive Z direction. So let's make that. Um, actually, we want it to be negative. So let's make it minus 0.9. There we go. And then we want to do the opposite of that. So let's just grab this guy here, both of these. We want to go G and move them up. Shift D to duplicate and bring them down. Let's take that same position, plug it into the vector here. There we go. And then this one, we want to change from greater than to less than. So let's make that less than. So I'm going to zoom out a bit, make it less than. And let's just make it the opposite. Let's make it positive 0.9. So let's make it 0.9. There we go. And then we want to combine these two with a multiplier. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move all of these guys up. I'm going to go Shift A search and get a math, get a utilities math node. I'm going to change it to multiply and I'm going to plug both of these values into here. So this one into the bottom, this one into the top. And now let's take that value output here and just plug it into the selection. And now you can see we have a way of controlling this. So I might have overshot it a bit so I can maybe mess around with that. So I can adjust this one and I can come ahead over here and adjust this one over here. Right. So now you have a cool way of controlling where you want that knurling effect to be. Okay, so there we have it. Um, that's really, really cool. I'm going to come over here, just turn off the wireframe. And that is how you can do knurling in Blender. I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I'll see you next time.